everybody, this is Brian, and this is Visual Basic 14. If you're following along, uh, you've already learned arrays. Today we're going to learn lists and generics. So let's dive right in and create a new variable called people as list. And you notice it's a list of t. What does of t mean? List means of type. So we have to give it a type. In this case, we're going to say string. Now we've declared our variable, but we haven't initialized it. What do I mean by that? Well, if we try to say people.add and we try to add Bob to the list, Visual Basic is going to throw an error and say, look, you're trying to use this variable before it's been assigned, a null reference exemption will occur. In plain English, what that means is you haven't assigned the variable, so it doesn't exist. You've said, I plan on using a variable named people, but you haven't actually made the variable. Confusing, I know. You say new. Whoops. Let's get rid of that list of, and we got to give it the same type, string. So here we're declaring it, dim people as list of string. Here we're initializing it, people equal new list of string. And yes, you can do this all in one line. So you're declaring and initializing all in one line. I like to do it that way. That way you don't forget to initialize it and have nasty errors later. Notice how we can now add Bob to the list. Let's just add a few people here. We'll say uh, Mary and Chad. So why do we need a list? We already have arrays. Well, lists are much more flexible and much more convenient, as you can see. Everything is an object in .NET, and that's what you're going to really be focusing on in this tutorial. Dim. Uh, we'll say s name as string for each s name in people and then we can just con whoops console right line and we'll just print out the name now what do I mean by everything's an object remember I've said that once before in an earlier tutorial and I never really explained it in depth well people is an object that object is a list you're creating an instance of that list once that instance is created by saying equal new list of string, you can call its methods and get its properties. For example, when you hit people and then dot, you get a list of properties and methods. There's a lot of them. You can do a lot with a list. It's very powerful. You can uh, union, you can search, you can sort, you can find, you can remove individual items, and you don't have to do a, a read and preserve. It's much more flexible. Now, gaining that flexibility, you lose speed. I'm going to show you just a couple simple examples of what this class can do for you. And this is called a class. We'll get into classes in another tutorial. Just know that it is a class. Remember, a class is a blueprint. And once you initialize it, it's an object. So let's run this. Sure enough, there's Bob, Mary, and Chad in our list. Well, let's say we want these sorted. Well, we can say people dot sort. So rather than having to make some nasty little algorithm to do our work for us, the people class, I'm sorry, the list class is actually sorting it for us. It's very convenient. You see now that our list is sorted. We have Bob, Chad, Mary. Now you can also say, hmm, let's say we want to get rid of Bob. We don't like Bob. So we're going to say if people dot contains, and we're looking for Bob, then, and the key contains method, or actually function in Visual Basic, will return a Boolean, meaning it returns true or false. So if it finds Bob, it's going to say true. We're going to say people dot remove, and we'll say Bob. So if people contains Bob, remove Bob. Run this again, and there's Chad and Mary. So as you can see, it's much more flexible than an array. You don't have to juggle things around. You don't have to read and preserve. You can add things in the middle. You can tack them onto the end. And you can all do all this dynamically without having to recreate the whole thing every single time. For example, let's say P 
people. Let's get rid of this. Let's keep Bob. Bob suddenly our, our friend again. Let's say people insert. And we want to insert. And this is like an array in the sense it's zero based. So let's say we want to put this in the first position. And we want to add, let's add my daughter, Heather. Because she's been good this week. I will add her to my people list. Now this is zero base, so zero, one, two. Let's run this. So you can see at the first position, which was Mary, we added Heather. But you notice how Mary's at the bottom. Why? Because we're calling people.sort. Now because we're calling people.sort, it rearranges everything. So let's get rid of that. Run this again. Now you can see that Heather is right before Mary. She cut in the line. So she's been bad this week. I'll have to ground her later for that. Just kidding if you're watching, kiddo. So that is a list. Now let me talk about generics a little bit more. What is a generic? You notice how it says list of string. Well, you're giving it a list of a type. You can put anything in there, and that's what's called a generic. A T, or the shorthand for type, is just generic, meaning you can throw a string, a boolean, an integer, and this list will work exactly the same. You can still add items, but it has to be of that type. You cannot say people.add and then try to add a zero here because you're trying to add an integer. Well, actually, maybe it'll let me do it. Yeah, Visual Basic's a little more flexible. It'll, it'll convert that to a zero. Some other .NET languages won't do that. It'll actually explode and say, whoa, hold on now, you can't do that. Now, if this were a list of integers and you tried adding Bob, it would most definitely explode and tell you, you know, you're stupid, check your, check your code compile and all this other nonsense, and basically, just stick with a certain type. Don't try to automatically add things and hope that VB will cast them or convert them the way you want them. So that's been our tutorial for today. I hope you found this educational and entertaining, and thank you for watching.